with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. find the greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, Rico! Are you Silver? one of the most famous sportsmen of his time. Young as he was, he had hunted big game in many lands. He had climbed mountain peaks on which no other man had ever set foot. The stable of fast horses which he maintained at his eastern home was beyond compare. But young Collingwood's great ambition had not been satisfied. He wanted to capture a fleet white stallion, which was reported to rove the plains, outrunning all pursuers and evading all traps. It was of this so-called phantom steed that he talked as he rode across the vast crossover spread in Texas, accompanied by Dave Hilton, the ranch owner, and Hilton's daughter, Laura. Collingwood was saying, I'm sure there is or was such a horse. There's a basis of truth in all legends. Well, maybe so, Clint. You see, there's always fire with a smoke. But I'll bet my bottom dollar you never find your ghost horse. Dave, the wild horse hunters I've hired to look for him say that he's wintering around Mesa Grande. They're just stringing you. They want to keep the job. Dad, you can't be sure of that. Washington Irving and Herman Melville believed there was a phantom seed and wrote about him. Yeah. Who are those fellas, Laura? Two great authors whose works I read in school back east. Ah, uh, those writing fellas are like professional horse hunters. They'll tell anything for money. Well, what about the Mexicans and Indians around here? They believe in the horse. The vaqueros call him Son of the Wind. The Apache name for him is Thunderhoof. They're just plain superstition. <laughs> Uh, just the same, I'm going to find out what's behind so many stories. Well, that's your right, Clint. I'll help you all I can, seeing as how you're going to be my son-in-law, but uh, I sure hate to see you spending so much money and get nothing back for the horse, lad. <laughs> you're a practical man, Dave. Yeah. I suppose you think I've got too much imagination. Nope, nope, that's why I like you. So do I. Now, uh, I've got a green tea. It's about starting a big horse ranch. Country needs better saddle stock. And the days are coming when it'll need draft horses even worse. Yes, I can see that. Now, why don't you put some of your money to work building up the West? You could be raising the flesh and blood horses we need instead of chasing a ghost horse. Hey, we could be partners. <laughs> the horse ranch of Hilton and Collingwood has now been found. Yes. Do you mean that, dear? Of course I do. But I don't like to give up hunting Thunderhoof just yet. Yes, I shall be, son. A fellow's dreams die hard. Dave, you're a sympathetic man. He's a dear. 
Hey, uh, where in Carnation do you figure to find those wild horse hunters of yours, huh? They had a camp in the cedar breaks along the Rio Rojo when I visited them before. Well, here's the river. Breaks are upstream. Yeah, come on. Yeah. As Clint Collingwood and his companions turned their horses upriver, a dozen hard-bitten men whom he had employed on their own word that they were professional wild horse hunters rose from a scanty meal at a camp in the cedar thicket. Two of them climbed into a chuck wagon which stood nearby, ready to roll. Tex Harper, the leader of the outfit, called to them. Rusty, you and Hank had better cut straight across the range to the Crosso headquarters. I want some chuck back here by supper time. Right, boss. Tell Collingwood we want plenty of bacon and coffee. We're working for all we can get. Get up there. Come on. Yes. Tex, that Collingwood fella must be loco. Hiring us horse thieves as mustangers and telling us to hunting a horse that don't exist. Uh, but Butch, you better not talk out of turn when he's around. we got to keep him thinking we're honest horse hunters and that there is such a critter as Thunderhoof. We need this job to hide behind. Oh, that's so. We're wanted. Wanted plenty bad for raiding that herd of army remounts. Uh, sure was the wrong play for it. But it looks so easy. The army hadn't put the U.S. brand on those horses yet. Only a few soldiers on guard... Yeah, but we had to plug some of them. Now the whole army's after us. Yeah, that's not all. In order to get away, we had to turn loose every horse except that white stallion. Tex, we'd better get rid of him, too. Oh, there's a lot of white horses. He can't be traced. And how come you keep him hidden all the time? I don't want Collingwood to see him around camp. You know, as dumb as that Easterner is, he's bound to start wondering pretty soon why it's always us who see the ghost horse and never him. So what? Well, if he shows signs of giving up the hunt and firing us, we let him have a look at the army horse from way off. Anything that's white or looks like thunder will sit here. There's somebody coming. Yeah, it's the Easterner. He's got the cross old boss and his gal with him. Oh, Howdy, folks. Hello, Tex. Robert to help with his daughter along to see how things are going. Now, I just sent Rusty and Hank to the ranch to see you. We're out of provisions. We didn't meet them, but they won't have any trouble getting supplies at the ranch commissary. Did anyone see Thunderhoof today? No, ma'am. We've been busy building a horse trap down the river. I'm going to take a look around for my dear best. Uh, what's the high places, Laura? That's where Mustangs go to look for danger. Tex, I've been wondering why Thunderhoof is never seen in the company of other Mustangs. Well, sir, I reckon he's kind of a lone wolf. But we'll get him. You'll give us time enough. How big do you think he is? No, he's a good 17 hands high. And silver white. Hmm? Dan, what? I see a big white horse. What? Get out of your place. Where is he? On top of the big mesa there across the river. Yeah, let's see. By Thunder, she does see a horse. But he's no Mustang. He's got a saddle on. There's a man on the other side of him. Now he's stepping around in front. He's wearing a mask. No, who did? Whoever he is, he has the finest horse I've ever seen. I wouldn't believe there was such a horse if I wasn't looking at him. Tex, take a look. I got my glasses on him. That must be Thunderhoof. He looks just like I always pictured him. Then why hasn't he been seen with a rider before? Well, that's easy to answer. Masked out who'd like him, but ride at night mostly. Let his horse graze in the daytime. There's another rider up there now. An Indian. I see him. But it's that white stallion I'm interested in. I'd give $10,000 for it. $10,000? Well, then, us boys will get him for you. Now, hold on. I'm not hiring you to steal him. What is it, stealing to take something from an outlaw? That's you, Clint. It's an old custom out here for a fellow who captures or kills an owl hoot to take his horse and gear, providing nobody else has got a better claim to it. Capture both the rider and horse, but don't harm either. If it turns out that I can claim the horse, you and your men will get the money. That suits me. We'll wait until they pull back from the edge of the mesa and then go after them. I'm going along. And so am I. Oh, no, Laura. It may be dangerous. Dangerous, fun. Well, you listen to your dad, girl. You stand right here in camp and I'm staying with you. Unaware that they were under observation, the Lone Ranger and Tonto looked down from the mesa top and discussed the letter which had been forwarded to them by a certain padre several weeks before. In it, their old friend Colonel Grayling of the United States Cavalry had asked their help in apprehending the horse thieves responsible for a murderous raid on a government herd. The masked man was saying, I know that kind of a crime threatens the future of the whole West. The frontier must have the army, and the army must have horses. That's right. Colonel Grayling is determined to make an example of the horse rustlers. He's moving his command into the Rojo Valley with the utmost secrecy. Now, when him say for us to meet him? Today. He wrote that he expected to reach the Crossroad Ranch this afternoon. He'll establish headquarters there. Uh, 
Me not savvy why him come here. The horse thieves were headed in this direction when the first pursuit party lost a trail. This is Mustang country, so the colonel suspects that the thieves have assumed the guise of wild horse hunters. Maybe plenty hunters around. How anybody know guilty fellas? He hopes to catch them in the possession of the one horse which wasn't recovered. The white horse the colonel had picked out for himself because he admires silver so much. Uh Him not find horse like silver. (laughs) No, he acknowledged as much. But said he would have been satisfied with it. In examining it, he naturally looked in its mouth. The horse had perfect teeth except for a slightly chipped front tooth. The chip was broken from the right corner of the upper middle tooth. Oh, that's a good way to know him. Let's get back into the saddle. Easy, Easy, Where will we go now? Now that we've had a view of the country, we go back down to the valley and head toward the ranch house. Scouting those cedar breaks on the way. Meanwhile, Dave Hilton and Laura had walked to the edge of the thicket which concealed the camp, hoping to get a better view of the hunt. As Clinton, the killers he had innocently hired, disappeared at the base of the mesa, the rancher lowered his field glasses. Uh, they'll be lucky if they catch them, Ash, man. Why do you say that? Well, the mesa is a big place, and it's getting on toward night. Look where the sun is. Oh, I see. Uh, that must be the chuck wagon coming by. The horses are running. Uh, what the hurry is. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Whoa, whoa. Come here, fellas. Hurry up. Should we tell them where the men went? No, wait. I want to know what scared them. Yeah, the horses are all gone except the white one we run. Maybe the gang pulled out and left. They might have done that if they heard about the troopers being at the ranch. Troopers at the ranch? Right. Right. What do they mean? They're getting out of the wagon. <laughs> horse thieves descended from the chuck wagon and continued their discussion of the whereabouts of their companions in crime. The Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein on the opposite side of the Rio Rojo. Oh, 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 the masked man pointed to the hoof-torn bank. Tonto, a big party of horsemen crossed here a short time ago. Look at that trail. Ah, you see it. Where do you think them go? It appears that they headed for the west side of the mesa. Ah. Well, it's a good thing we come down the east side. Yes. We want to avoid being seen before we contact the cavalry. Um, where we go now? The back trail of those riders may tell us something about them. So we'll cross here and go on. At that moment, Laura's horse whinnied. As Hank and Rusty stared into the cedars and drew their guns, the girl clutched her father's arm. Again, my horse has given us away. Hey, look at this way. Let's find a better hiding place. No, no, no. We'll go in where they are and act as though we hadn't heard them. Come on now. Howdy, fellas. Well, isn't the boss of the cross zone is yours? You can put away your guns. How comes you're out here? Well, we're waiting for Clint Collingwood and the rest of the bunch. We're in town each other. Go across the river chasing a masked man on a big white horse. Laura and I were down on the bank watching him. Didn't you know we were here? Well, sure. We heard the chuck wagon. You heard more than that. You weren't 50 feet away. Well, what was there to hear? Don't try to run a bluff. He called troopers to your ranch to kick at you. Here's a well, spy. Sure, I didn't call any soldiers. And I'm not a spy. I wouldn't have my daughter along if I was. You figured she'd keep us from suspicioning you. Well, you ordinary horse thief, you can't say that about me. So you did hear it. Like a man, he's gone. Run, Laura, run. Dad. Oh, Dad. Let me scare him. What'll we do with the girl? Just cross the river where the rest of the boys are and take her along. Listen. I've heard horses splashing in the river. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Oh, no. That fella isn't dead yet. Finish. Pull the girl away. No. No, don't do it. Come on. Get no. away from your old man. That's far enough, Rusty. Now I'll do a good job on him. Don't move, Look there. The masked man. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Clint Collingwood had innocently hired a gang of murderous horse thieves to capture a fabulous stallion called Thunderhoof. Mistaking Silver for the legendary steed, Collingwood set out with most of the gang to capture the Lone Ranger and his mount. Meanwhile, the masked man and Tonto had reached the outlaw's camp just in time to keep two of them from killing a wounded rancher, Dave Hilton. As the Lone Ranger commanded them to drop their guns, one outlaw yelled, Run for the wagon, Rusty! Hey, there's an engine back of it. I'm dropping my gun. There goes mine. I'll right, pick up their guns and tie them. I'll look after the wounded man. They were going to shoot my father again. I know. He's not badly hurt. The bullet didn't penetrate his head. Here, I'll help you bandage him. Now, you fellas, put hands up. Sure, engine, sure. Hank's right hand went up only as far as his shoulder. Then, with a swift movement born of long practice, he snatched out a keen-edged throwing knife, which he had carried in a sheath between his shoulder blades. Tonto leaped in the grapple with him, calling a warning. Watch out, Kim, coming. Grab the engine, Rusty. Grab that hold of him. Get that mask, man. The knife flashed out of Hank's hand. He had aimed at the Lone Ranger's side, but the masked man's reaction to danger was quick. As he jumped up from the crouching position he had taken in examining the wounded rancher, the blade struck his cartridge-filled gun belt with a clang. Seeing the knife fall harmlessly to the ground, the desperate outlaw rushed the lone ranger. He was snarling. You'll never take me alive. We'll see about that. Look at this. I'll show you something. Oh, oh, help me, Rusty. I can't. The engine's breaking my arm. Hold on to him, Toto. I'll take care of this fellow. Like that. No. No. Don't hit me anymore. Lie there. You can be tied. You get down the same way, fella. I'm on my knees. That's better. There's a rope hanging on that wagon, Toto. I'll watch these men while you get it. Excuse me, sir. Hang the horse. Dad, Dad, you've come too. Uh, My skull's too thick for bullets. I've got an infernal headache. Maybe it'll kill me to see those buzzards get their necks stretched. Now, we're not taking the law into our own hands. I only want to make sure they don't escape. After the two outlaws had been tied and loaded into the wagon, Dave Hilton and Laura related what had happened in the camp and explained why Clint Collingwood had crossed the river with the other horse thieves. The Lone Ranger waved aside their apologies for Collingwood and turned to Toto. Toto, search the thicket for that stolen horse the thieves mentioned before they discovered Mr. Hilton and his daughter. Bring in our horses. Ah, uh, he's happy. We'd better get started for the ranch with those two bull cats. Then we can tell the soldiers about the others. If the cavalry attempts to capture the other outlaws while Collingwood is with them, they use him as a shield, and the soldiers will shoot. But certainly the commanding officer wouldn't let them kill an innocent man. Colonel Grayling is prepared to sacrifice his own life and the lives of his troopers in the line of duty. He won't reckon Collingwood's life as being more valuable than that of a private in his regiment. I yeah, reckon he'd be right. Maybe I can find the gang and get him away while there's still time. You've been in enough danger, Lars. I like Clint, but you're my daughter. <laughs> a few minutes later when Toto reappeared. He was riding Scout and leading Silver and another white horse almost as big as the mighty stallion. Oh, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, where did you find him, Toto? Him stick out in gully. Keep hold of his picket rope and I'll take a look in his mouth. Steady, boy. Easy, steady. Uh-huh. And what you find? The stolen army horse. There can be no doubt of it. Yeah, you'll hang the lot of them. If they can be catching. Mr. Hilton, I'd like to use your stand and ride on this horse. You go ahead. I can ride in the chuck lane. Getting dark, you better start back to the ranch at once. You go with them, Tonto. Take their horses along. Uh, and what you do? I have a plan that may cause the outlaws to expose themselves to Colonel Grayling. I'll keep Silver and the stolen horse here. The map sound plenty dangerous. The risk is worth taking. Uh, let me tell, Colonel. Tell him to do nothing tonight except keep a strong force of men posted around the ranch buildings and corral. There, I've got the saddle girth tight. Stolen horse is ready to ride. Why do you think the thieves kept him? They didn't know he could be identified. Well, for another thing, he could have been used as a ringer for Thunderhoof if he wasn't seen too close. Here, Dad. Let me help you into the way. No, no, I'm making it all right. I'll drive. Adios. Adios. wagon rolled away, the Lone Ranger rode the stolen horse into the gully where it had been concealed. There he left Silver. The great stallion, sensing that his master was about to ride away on a strange horse, whinnied a protest. 
<laughs> the masked man responded with a reassuring pat. No, I'm not giving you up for another horse, big fella. You wait here. Come on, stranger. We have work to do. Come on, get up. Get up, boy. <laughs> up when the outlaws who had been hunting the masked man and his horse approached their camp, led by Tex and Clint Collingwood. Tex was saying, I don't know how that owl who gave us a slip. We sure have tried hard enough to get you his horse. He could have crossed the river while we were on the other side of the mesa. Now we're coming to the river. Camp's up this way. I don't suppose the Hilton's waited this long for me. No, likely not. I sure hope the chuck wagon's back. You better stay overnight with us, Mr. Collingwood. Maybe we can pick up the big stallion's trail in the morning. I don't know. Hey, look! Across the river! What? The masked man! Into the river, boys! Let's get it! Come on! Get out, you animals! I'm going to shoot you! Don't try to hit him! He shot back! You heard my orders! Come on! Get him! Meanwhile, the Hiltons and Toto had reached the cross hole with the prisoners. Finding Colonel Grayling quartered in the ranch house, they told him what the masked man had requested. He shook his gray head. No one man can bring in 10 or 12 desperados. The masked man has a plan. Give him a chance. A chance to do what, Mr. Hilton? Let the gang escape? No, he's done his part and done it well. Now the army takes over. I'll use my whole regiment. Uh, to do what? Well, I'll have the river patrolled. I'll surround the cedar brakes and beat the brush till nothing that creeps, crawls, or walks can get away. But you'll get Clint Collingwood killed. I know, Mr. Collingwood. He put himself in danger and he'll have to take his chance. But, Colonel... Young lady, those horse thieves defied the army, stole government property, and killed good soldiers. They must be wiped out at all costs. Wait just an hour before you do anything like that. An hour? It's nine now. Well, you hide men here, Colonel, like my friends say. If nothing happened by ten... Me go out with you. Me show you where outlaws got camp. Yep. All right, Tonto. I'll post guards here and wait that long. But not a second longer. As the colonel made his decision, the Lone Ranger began to circle back toward the outlaw's camp. Some of his pursuers were shooting to kill, but the stolen army horse was fresher than theirs, enabling him to keep out of bullet range. Tex was shouting, He's cutting back, Butch! I'll head him off! Come on, some of you. Right, come on, get up there. Let's come with me. Put the spurs to your horses. Get up there. Get up there. Keep them out of the cedar brake. We're gaining a little. That horse isn't as fast as I thought. Just don't forget your promise. You'll be paid. Looks like Bush and his bunch are getting ahead of him. Stop, fellas. You can't get away. Somebody's really him that time. His horse is going up. He's falling. There he goes. I told you not to shoot him. Ah, it was an accident. Get a rope, Freddy. I'm making the loop. There's where the masked man fell. And I don't see him. Forget about him. Watch me take that horse. There, how's that for a throw? You put the loop right over his head. Don't break his neck. Never mind, I'm taking it easy. Oh, 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 oh. I'll oh. put another rope on him and we can meet him between us. Uh, that's stopping him. Hold oh, 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 oh. Yeah, pushing his boy. I see you got the horse. But where's the match, man? Somewhere behind him. Stop some lead. Let's go back and look for him. What for? We can't let him crawl away and die out here. Let him die if he isn't already dead. I'll go back alone. Suit yourself. What do we do with the horse? Take him to the cross or corral. I'll see you later. Right. Get him. Come on. All right, boys. Let's go. Get him. Get him. Get him. Outlaws were in high spirits as they rode through a cottonwood grove with a captured white horse and saw the lights of the cross old ranch just ahead. Butch was saying, Ten thousand dollars for today's work and no law to worry about. Sure, be short, Ruffin, all hollow. Yeah, just the same. I wish Collingwood would have come along with us. The masked man might have had enough life left to kill a dude. Then we'd be out our money. Get ah, quit, Stuart. The way that hombre fell, he didn't go far. Or live long. There's the corral. Let's pull up and lie. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Who are you, man? Collingwood's horse hunter. He wanted us to put this white stallion in the corral. Where is Collingwood? He'll be along a little while. Close him, man. Close him. Close him. Close him. Close him. Close him. We'll shoot you to the last man. Oh, we haven't done anything. Disarm the men. Right. Sergeant, bring the ladders from the bunkhouse. Come right, sir. You horse, do you see a masked man tonight? Masked man? What are you talking about? Don't lie. Only he could have sent you here. 
My friend, come now, Colonel. Yes, by thunder, there he is. Hey, look. The masked man. And, and look. Why, it's impossible. He, he's still riding his white horse. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 I see you've caught the gang, Colonel. Thanks to you. But how did you manage to send them in? How are we going to prove them guilty? They brought the evidence with them. The evidence? There's the white horse that was stolen. You can identify him by his chipped tooth. Why? Why, he let us test that critter. And he pretended that fall. We just the same as hung ourselves. I don't understand this at all. Mr. Collingwood can explain later. I met him on the way here and told him what happened. Clint. Oh, Clint, thank heaven you're safe. I'm the better for what happened to you. I've had my fill of hunting horses, especially ghost horses. The masked man has told me that the legend of Thunderhoof started right after the Mexican War. So the horse died long ago if he ever actually existed. So there is no Thunderhoof? No. But there is a silver, and he lives on. The masked man and Indian are gone. Well, gone? There was so much I wanted to ask. I never heard of the leg. Why, we didn't even get a chance to thank them, man. We sure owe them a lot. Yes, and so does the army. But they want no thanks. They've dedicated themselves to the betterment of life in the West. In the achievement of that end, they find their reward. Colonel, who is the masked man? He's almost a legendary figure himself. He's the Lone Ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger.